All right, so we got some huge news for Palantir stock investors as the company provided updates on their total contract value growth on the differences between the U.S. Co consumer customer count and the results of the headwinds they're facing in Europe and a bunch of other items that are critical for investors to evaluate for making a decision on Palantir stock one way or another. Some of you might have noticed Palantir's significant stock price increases and are interested in buying Palantir stock. Others, you might have been fortunate enough to have owned Palantir stock all year in 2024 and before, and you're now trying to decide, is it time to sell Palantir stock? Well, regardless of which side of the equation you're on, this news is critical for your decision making. So let me share with you these critical details. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so in the third quarter, Palantir booked 300 million of U.S. commercial value, contract value, representing 13% growth from the previous quarter. And the total remaining deal value grew 73% year over year. And remember, the remaining deal value eventually turns into revenue. So the more contracts the company signs now, the more revenue will increase in future quarters and future years. Now, the U.S. consumer customer count or commercial customer count increased to 321, which reflected 77% growth year over year, 77% growth. And you can see the opportunity ahead. They have only 321 commercial customers, only 321 businesses are customers of Palantir. And there are millions of millions of businesses worldwide. So you can see the opportunity ahead for Palantir. However, it wasn't all good news in the company's latest quarter. They reported a 7% sequential decline as a result of continued headwinds in Europe and a step down in revenue from a government entity in the Middle East. Palantir is not achieving anywhere near the level of success outside of the United States, as Palantir has been a vocal supporter of U.S. interests worldwide. So maybe that enthusiastic support of the U.S. government has made other countries a little bit less enthusiastic about purchasing Palantir services. That's something that I've been keeping an eye out for with Palantir for some time now. Still, the opportunities with the U.S. and its allies, there are many allied countries worldwide of the United States, and just the sheer size of the number of businesses available is enough of an opportunity for Palantir, even if certain countries remain off limits for Palantir, given its stance, given its political stance. They also reported third quarter total commercial value booked was 1.1 billion, which was up 33% year over year. More impressively, the net dollar retention rate came in at 118%, which was an increase in 400 basis points from the last quarter. Now, the net dollar retention rate measures how much an existing customer increases spending with Palantir in the second year of service, or at least the second year of service. So either going from the first to second year or from the third to fourth year as a customer with Palantir. Did they increase spending? Did they decrease spending? A number of 100% would mean that the business spent the same amount this year as they did last year, flat. But what happened with Palantir is 118%. So customers this year spent 18% more than they did last year. And that's a resounding signal that customers perceive Palantir services as a great value. Otherwise, they wouldn't increase spending and they wouldn't increase it by 18%. Now, if you've been following my channel for the duration, you'll know my six-step investing framework. One of the steps in my six-step investing framework is the customer value proposition. I place great importance on that because it determines the long-term success of a company, how well your customers feel they are being served. If your customers feel like they're getting a good value, they're going to keep coming back and they're going to tell other businesses. And when other businesses join, they're going to see that great value and they're going to add to their spending year over year. 
it's a phenomenal determinant of long-term success. And that's why I place a great importance on this factor. And Palantir demonstrates an excellent score in this factor. In fact, the score is improving. It increased by 400 basis points just from the previous quarter, going from 114 to 118%. Palantir ended the third quarter with $4.5 billion in total remaining deal value, which was an increase of 22% year over year and 4% from the previous quarter. This will eventually turn into revenue. And if you think about it, they're forecasting for 2024 overall revenue around $2 billion. So they have a backlog of orders, total remaining deal value of two years worth, more than two years worth of revenue, right? If we imagine that they're not going to grow next year, which they are likely to grow. So let's say two years worth of uh, revenue they have in contract. And that's good because you can feel comfortable that the company has revenue that's coming in, even if they don't sign very many new contracts, the existing contracts serving those will generate significant revenue for the company. And this is primarily just the commercial business. This does not include its government business because the way they do the contracts for their government customers, they don't include it in remaining deal value, which makes it even more impressive because the company still generates uh, a large part of its revenue from government institutions. Something else I've been looking out for Palantir in 2024 is expense growth. To start the year, they kind of talked about how they're going to increase hiring because demand for their service is so strong that they need more people to serve all those extra customers they're getting. But they've still done a good job keeping costs under control. In the third quarter, adjusted expense was up just 6% from the previous quarter and 14% year over year, driven by continued investment in technical talent. So they're hiring more people to serve these new customers. And they expect to continue increasing expenses through the fourth quarter as they invest in the product pipeline and accelerate the journey from AI prototype to production. Now, investors have become reassured that this spending will not go out of control. That's something they were a little bit concerned about coming into 2024. But Palantir has shown investors that they're keeping costs under control. They're not being silly with their spending. They're not jumping over themselves to grow their expense, to grow their number of people just because they're experiencing a reinvigoration of revenue growth. They're being patient. They're being methodical. And they're being prudent with expense growth all while they're invigorating revenue growth. So this has all been uh, big news, huge news, and great news for Palantir stock investors. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to announce that my book is finally available for sale. I've been working on it for more than a year now, so I'm really excited to finally share this with you now. It goes through my framework for evaluating stocks. Some of you often ask why I like this stock or why I like the other stock, and this framework provides you the things that I look at when I'm evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.